The new Universal Render Pipeline sample scenes are available on the Unity Hub for Editor Versions 2022 LTS Up. Whereas before, we used the construction scene as a small demo, for our update, we wanted to use multiple scenes to demonstrate the full gamut of possibilities that URP allows for, since the render pipeline is super flexible. Each of the four scenes are designed to show the capabilities of a specific aspect of URP. If you want to learn URP inside and out, we recommend going through the ebooks linked below, URP for Advanced Unity Creators, and the URP VFX Cookbook. Videos like this one are based on these resources, especially when it comes to just getting started. On that note, at the end of this video, we'll use the Unity Hub to start a new project with these scenes. If you'd like to do that together, I don't want to rush, so we'll switch gears to a more conventional tutorial format. For now, let's move on to an overview of the scenes. First up, the garden. This scene illustrates how efficiently you can scale your content to suit multiple platforms from mobile and console to high-end desktops. It features stylized PBR rendering, customizable vegetation, and the rendering of numerous lights with the new Forward Plus renderer, which surpasses previous light count limits. The Oasis is a demonstration of realism with highly detailed textures, VFX graph effects, speed tree, and a custom water solution. It targets devices that support compute shaders, which leverage the parallel processing of GPUs. The cockpit scene uses custom lighting shaders created using shader graph. This scene is designed for untethered VR devices, like Meta's Quest 2 or 3. VR, of course, has a very high pixel count and demanding frame rate. For full scenes, using PBR textures for these devices is not recommended, so the cockpit scene provides one possible stylized approach. Each scene is linked together by the terminal. The terminal is a hub for the samples with a transition effect from one scene to the next. Check out our YouTube Shorts for a tutorial on how the transition is achieved. URP supports a wide range of hardware, and there are several ways the new sample scenes illustrate how to work with different devices. In the project settings, there are a couple different quality options for mobile and PC. Each uses a different render pipeline asset. URP handles quality through the quality panel in project settings, together with the settings of the render pipeline asset. The garden uses the new Forward Plus renderer. Forward rendering processes and renders each object one by one directly to the screen, the forward buffer. There's no intermediate step or additional buffer like in deferred rendering. Forward rendering has a limit of nine lights, one main and eight additional. Eight lights might seem like a lot, but if you have a large mesh like a spacious interior or exterior scene like the garden here, you have to split up your meshes in such a way to deal with the per object limit. Forward plus removes the light limit and additionally, you can blend more than two reflection probes. Forward Plus relies on the CPU to do calling operations per frame, so it's not the best option for low-end mobile devices. In that case, you'll want to use deferred rendering. Render features give you a way to add extra passes to a URP renderer, like ambient occlusion for shadowing in areas hidden from ambient light. In the garden, the decal renderer feature is used for the flower petals on the ground. To make a decal, create a material and assign the shader graph's decal shader to it. Drag in your base map texture, and then create a decal projector game object. Drag in the material, bring down the opacity, and things clearly got pretty wild at the tea party last night. With the debuffer setting, Unity renders decals into the decal buffer, and the content is overlaid on top of opaque objects during the opaque rendering. The surface data property lets you specify which surface properties of decals Unity blends with the underlying meshes. Since the technique requires the depth normal prepass, it isn't as efficient on certain GPUs. In screen space, Unity renders decals after the opaque objects using normals that Unity reconstructs. The decals are rendered as meshes on top of the opaque meshes. Screen space is recommended for lower end mobile, and you can use the automatic setting, which switches depending on the GPU of the device. Since lights with real-time shadows are expensive, they can be faked, and perhaps even made more dramatic through the use of light cookies. For higher-end devices like handheld, PC, console, and high-end mobile, the Oasis features advanced materials with complex shader graphs for the environment. The water shader graph in particular combines probe reflections and ray-marched reflections. Probe reflections for broader environmental reflections like general ambience and distant objects. And ray-marched reflections for detailed view-dependent reflections particularly useful for objects close to the water surface. An incredible aspect of our vision is how our eyes automatically adjust their sensitivity to light when moving between outdoor and indoor environments. Indoors, the light levels are often 50 to 100 times or more lower than outdoors. 
we barely notice this drastic change because our eyes adjust almost instantly. Local volumes are not a new feature in Unity, but the tent and the oasis is a perfect demonstration of how to use them to adjust exposure between different spaces, just like how our eyes naturally adapt to varying light conditions. If you're interested in creating custom URP effects, check out the live stream What's New in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline at around the 45 minute mark to see tech artist Jonas give a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to recreate the Oasis height fog. The cockpit sample is all about custom lighting and shaders to achieve the high performance required on VR standalone headsets like the Quest 2, where the scene runs at 72 frames per second. This scene is oriented around the timeline rather than free gameplay, and thus serves as an example for storyboarding, short films, previs, or cutscenes. Like the other scenes, all the materials are built in shader graph. In this case, the materials are built from the unlit shader base and include a tune lighting subgraph as a low-cost stylized lighting solution. The actual light has no shadows since we can get better performance from tune shading. In addition to highlighting a multi-scene workflow with creative transitions, the terminal serves as a look dev environment for you to drop in assets and review how things appear. These samples are a living project with more features on the way, so let us know how the scenes are working for you. All right, let's get a new project started with the sample scenes. In the hub, I'll click New Project. I'm in the latest 2022 LTS version, which is 2022.3.17. I don't see the URP sample scene here, so I'll scroll through the templates and find 3D sample scenes URP, select it, and download the template. I'm calling the project Exploring Sample Scenes, and then I'll deselect connecting this to the Unity Cloud since this project is more for reference and I won't be saving any work. Okay, great. We have our starting tutorial splash screen. Before you enter play mode, I'd recommend you go to the presentation in the tutorials and visit each one of the scenes so that the shaders compile. There's a little note here that it can take a while. When you press play the first time and go into the rooms to go to another scene, there's also shader compilation related to scene transition effects, which can take a while. But after that initial compilation, everything is smooth from there. I hope that helps you get started. If you have any issues, let us know in the comments. Myself or somebody else will try and help you out. All right, take care.